right now. Yeah. 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 Why don't you stand up and just tell me? So you're going to go through the slides, or you're just going to do an introduction? I'll do the slides if you oh. want. It doesn't matter to me. I thought you said you wanted him to do it. No, I wanted him to introduce it. Oh. Okay. Let's uh, let's proceed if we can. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. This is a uh, outreach night, so if you have questions. We'll provide information. If you have questions, throw them at us, and we'll try to answer whatever we can for you. Um, I'm John Carney. Um, I'm a retired police officer. I've lived in Deerfield for about 44 years, not a native. Um, got a long way to go to be a native. But anyhow, I, I have some, some time here. My, uh, my children went to uh, Deerfield Elementary Union 38 schools. Now I have grandchildren coming up. So I do have a vested interest in this town. I want to see uh, uh, nothing bad come to this town. I want to see the town thrive. And I want this to be a, uh, a positive uh, enterprise. So uh, I wouldn't sign off on anything that I didn't think was going to be good for the town. Um, but before I proceed, let me introduce uh, the attorney for, the, uh, for this company, uh, Tom Lesser. He's going to say a few words, and then we'll move on to the slideshow. Tom? I, I represent. Nat Deerfield Naturals LLC, and the principal here is to my right. It's Mark Vallone. Many of you may know him. He's a been a longtime resident of Deerfield, and he has a business in Deerfield, Atlantic Furniture, and he owns a property which is in the marijuana zone. And as a result, he's interested in doing different kinds of marijuana licenses that we're going to get to in a minute. This is just an informational meeting. If anybody has any questions, please, we want them all answered. If anybody has any qualms or concerns, we, we want to address all of those. Um, to his right is Matt Plotkin, who actually was born in Deerfield, as I, I believe, and he will be the facilities manager. He'll be in charge of the construction. He'll be in charge of the building. And a series of slides have been prepared that everybody will be able to see, and we'll go through those. And then we'll open it up to questions that people have. Slides? <laughs> All right, start off. I think the uh, important wording on this slide is local and locally. Um, so I think that uh, one of our strong points is the people on this board are, are mainly local residents. I think that might mean a lot to some of you people that you're not dealing with a company that comes out of California or New York or anything like that. We're, we're a local-based company. We, we do have that interest to, uh, to serve the town well. So. This is, of course, Mark, who was just introduced. Matt? Beth is the only one on the team who's not uh, here tonight. And, and she'll be doing the human resources. Right. Uh, she's, a, she's a Deerfield resident. And she has a long background in employee relations. Looks like George Clooney. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's actually me. James. As you can see, James has quite a bit of experience in the industry. Uh, actually, the, the team as a whole uh, is a pretty, pretty strong group of people. We, we all have our specialties. But, we all do have some background, so as you go through, you'll see what we have. Jason? If I'm going too fast, does somebody speak up? It should be. I'll give you a little more time to read as we go along. I don't want to rush this thing through, but I just want you to uh, be familiar with the uh, principles of the company. That's all. He just walked out to check the door. Uh, he's, as you can see, he's got 
a wealth of uh, experience. Is that better in terms of sound? Thank you. All right. This is Jalal right here. I didn't mean to be a wise guy. No, no, no I mean, we, we want you to hear. We yeah, want you to hear. Uh, so anyhow, uh, there's an there's a organization, the, uh, it's the Cannabis Commission for the state. They do provide a, a wealth of uh, requirements. I mean, this, you have to fulfill all of the requirements that, that they're asking for. And it's, it's pretty in-depth. But there's also the, the uh, local people. And we were here, I'm not sure if any of you were here last evening, uh, but we were here to, uh, to do a presentation for the uh, select board. Um, so there is a process we have to follow um, before we can present a package to the uh, Cannabis Commission, we have to get local approval. So uh, uh, we'll meet with, as they say, the uh, select board. Uh, we'll meet with the planning board, and uh, we'll also meet with the police chief. Um, and we'll provide the police chief with whatever he needs for him to feel comfortable with our uh, with our, our program. Basically, the place where it's located is 10 Greenfield Road on routes five and 10. If anyone doesn't understand where that is, we can explain that more fully. And we'll have maps of that as we go along. It was formerly the Deerfield Plastics Building. It's directly across from the Red Roof Inn on five and 10. It's an industrial zoned area. And it's also within the Deerfield Marijuana Overlay District. So that means it's allowed provided you get special permit from the planning board. And that would be the Deerfield Planning Board. And the Deerfield Planning Board has extensive regulations and requirements in terms of submittal of different plans. And we submit those plans and then we ask for the special permit. Uh, the property is just under 13 acres. It's secured presently by a chain link fence. But the Cannabis Control Commission has maybe 100 pages of single-spaced, single-aligned regulations, and six or seven of them have to do with security. And we can answer questions about the security later on, but the, the, secure, the facility has to be totally secure. IDs are checked in the retail portion of it. You can't get into the other portion without IDs, which you wear at all <coughs> times. And we'll be going over that in, in more depth. And then there'll be Board of Health regulations, which haven't been formulated yet, but are in the process of being formulated. And we'll have to meet all those requirements too. Then you, we go to the town, we go to the Board of Selectmen, and we try to work out what's called a, a host community agreement with them. And under the host community agreement, provided we work out those terms, they would say they either approve or they don't object to us applying to the Cannabis Control Commission. And part of that would be, we appeared last night and we suggested that we'd offer a certain amount of money for educational purposes and a certain amount of money out of the proceeds for the town to use as they see fit. And there's also a, three, uh, there's also a tax on the retail portion. So there'd be money coming in from the cultivation portion, money coming in from the retail portion. We'll talk more about that. Does anybody have a question as to the physical location of this building? Is everybody familiar with uh, what we're talking about? Okay. This gives you a kind of an idea of the overall uh, location. A little bit hard to see, but can you all get a picture of what we're looking at here? Okay. Can see my house from here. Where about? Eastern Avenue. Oh, Eastern Avenue, okay. Again, a little bit more about the uh, actual property, where it is. Um, as Tom mentioned, it is, it is within the uh, overlay 
district, which is a requirement. Fairly large piece of property, and it is uh, secured by that uh, uh, chain link fence. Another requirement is that the facility not be within 500 feet of a school or a daycare, and it's thousand, at least 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet away from the nearest facility like that. Well, there is a buffer zone that's required, and uh, so there can't be a, a pre-existing school uh, within 500 feet of any facility like this. And that starts anything kindergarten up to uh, grade 12. You can't have anything within, any school within 500 feet. A little more in depth on the uh, location. I was over at this property, uh, I believe yesterday, and there's a lot of work going on right now. I mean, uh, especially in the back part, you may not see it from the front, but uh, <clears throat> there is quite a bit of construction going on uh, e even right now. So it's uh, not a finished product at this point, but it, it's, it is coming along. This gives you some idea of the floor plan. There's a lot of, uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of space within this building. And uh, uh, to the right side, uh, we'll give you a little better idea of uh, the current uh, situation that is being proposed. Um, so there'll be an opportunity if, if anybody would like to come up and take a peek at this a little, little closer and see what we're talking about. But there'll be three kinds of licenses that will be uh, applied for. And one is a retail license. And that means you have the ability to sell marijuana or marijuana related products and that will be 2,400 square feet. And there'll be two sides to that. One will be for medical marijuana, and one will be for recreational marijuana. People over 21 can buy recreational marijuana, assuming that the, it's, an, it's an approved establishment. The medical marijuana is for people who have a medical marijuana card and you can't get into the medical marijuana part of the facility unless you show your card and, and your card is looked at and approved. And you can't get into the recreational part of it unless you can show that you're over 21. Uh, the difference really primarily is medical marijuana is not taxed, <laughs> whereas recreational marijuana is taxed and there's a significant tax on the recreational marijuana. But the experience in other states is you'll have recreational marijuana selling far more than medical marijuana, maybe four to one, something in three to one, four to one in that neighborhood. And then there's a place for the manufacturing that was on that map also so there'll be three licenses. There'll be the retail, we'll, that they all come from the Cannabis Control Commission. One is the retail, one is the manufacturing, making marijuana-related products, and the third one is cultivation. Uh, before I forget, I, I hate to interrupt you, but you said the medical marijuana would not be taxed. Now, what, what tax are you talking about? Well, on the recreational marijuana, there's a state tax. Sales tax? Sales tax, a hefty, well, it's actually 12%. Then the town has an additional tax of 6%. Yeah, what, about the, what about personal property tax? Well, um, of course, the, the facility pays personal property tax, and that will be significant since there's very expensive lighting that goes into the facility. And they pay that in addition, just as they pay real estate tax based on the value of the, of the real estate and the fixtures and the improvements. Well, the inventory. Mm-hmm, yeah. So there's, the inventory could include the marijuana. There's significant potential, uh, not even potential, there'll be significant benefits 
from the for the town in terms of taxes. Is, is, do you intend to qualify as a manufacturing corporation? I know it's your LLC. Um, you, you, we haven't. You know, the taxes are very specialized, yeah, they are. and and I don't think it's been determined. We haven't determined or thought about what's taxable. As part of the host committee agreement, though, we are offering a percentage of the value of what is cultivated to the town. And we expect this to be in the neighborhood of close to $100,000 a year to the town outside of the personal property tax and the real estate taxes. Is your question answered? Fine. Okay. I think so. All right. Again, more. Uh, uh, I'd like to go up to the uh, screen and, and kind of point out things, but I have to stay close to the mic. But as I say, I think you'll have a chance to uh, look at this closely and uh, kind of see what we're talking about here. This relates obviously to uh, cultivation. Um, and the process that has to uh, uh, go into it. So, so you intend to farm indoors? Yes. Right. right. Yes, and we have the three people who are going to be in charge of, of the growing. So if there's any specific questions anyone wants to ask, that's why they're here tonight. There will be no outdoor growing. So these are some of the things that relate to the employees that uh, we anticipate having. And uh, obviously, their safety is a big concern of ours. Um, so there will be, there'll be a, an entire procedure that uh, they'll be required, as required by the, uh, by the commission, including uh, training and then yearly uh, follow-up training, so there's quite a bit to go uh, uh, for the employees to go through, but it's all, it all, is all for their safety. Getting back into the 500-foot buffer zone, um, there is nothing within 500 feet or even close to that, so we're, we're not, uh, we have no concerns about this, uh, but it is a concern for the uh, commission, but it does not apply to us. This is just a small sampling of what the uh, security uh, concerns will be. Um, again, there's, I think, four, four or five pages of uh, requirements <clears throat> from the commission, can, from the Cannabis Commission. Uh, our intention is to uh, meet, and wherever we can, we'll exceed uh, the requirements. This, this is just give you a, a, a very brief idea of some of the things that, that are, that's required. And uh, at the end of the presentation, anybody who has a, a question about security, I can try to answer that for you. One thing that's missing there is cameras, actually. There are cameras outside, which are basically looking at every inch of the perimeter. And then there are cameras inside which show every room and everyone who's in every room and what they're doing where there's marijuana product, whether that be retail or whether that be cultivation. Short of a, of a casino, there are more cameras in this marijuana facility than any other type of facility, and perhaps more than a casino, actually. There'll also be a camera uh focused on the parking lot, so vehicles coming and going will be on camera. They say that uh, these facilities are actually more secure than most uh, police departments. So this will be a, an extra tight uh, facility. Well, this is what I talked about before, the different types of licenses, the medical marijuana, the recreational, the manufacturing, the manufacturing will include <coughs> edible marijuana, and um, there will eventually be a testing 
and potentially a laboratory facility there in terms of a research center. We're going to be reaching out to UMass because there's a great facilities at UMass in terms of, of their science department and they've begun to do marijuana research there and we'll be partnering with them to do more. This has to do with, this slide has to do with making sure that minors don't get it. There's no on-site consumption. You'll need a state-issued medical marijuana card if that's where you're going. You'll need a state-issued ID showing you're 21. If you're going to the adult use or recreational facility, you're not allowed to have any marketing or advertising geared toward minors. Uh, the edible products have to be very simple in design. They can't be uh, intended to attract the interest of juveniles. There are all sorts of warning labels on all the products that are sold. And there are certain people who are, who are not allowed to be employees of marijuana facilities. You know, we're going to try to be as unobtrusive as possible. Um, the signage lighting is going to be turned off during non-business hours. Marijuana products are not going to be visible from outside the retail space at all. Um, it's in an industrial zoned area with no residences within 300 feet. Uh, noise levels are going to be kept to a, a minimum. There's going to be a ventilation system and filtration system to maintain an odor-free facility. They say that you can walk by these facilities, you won't even, you won't be able to smell anything. A little different from a brewery. So this is this is what uh, what uh, I think is going to benefit the town and the local area. The uh, 30 to 40 full-time uh, jobs that we expect will, as, as much as possible, come from the local community. It'll be, it'll be a good employer for this town. As I talked about before, there's an intent to... Um, coordinate with the University of Massachusetts Botany and Chemistry Departments to do research, cannabis and marijuana research, and, and design a holistic approach to the medical marijuana facility of it. And it's intended that it, it be organic to the extent possible, and we're going to be researching methods to make it more organic over time. So. All right, so that, uh, that's the slideshow that uh, uh, just kind of gives you a, a general uh, view of our position. Um, does anybody have any questions they want to pose to any of the principals? Uh, if you have anything, as they say, security concerns, um, I can help you with that. But uh, feel free to, to ask anything that's on your mind. Well, uh, you know, you got to remember how early we are into this process. Uh, I'll be responsible for the security end of it, but as far as actual personnel, uh, I really can't give you too much on that right now. But it's, it's not going to be any burden to the town. All the expense of security will be on the applicant. We won't be asking anything from the town in terms of security. We have to employ adequate security and whether or not they're full-time employees of the LLC or whether some of it is subbed out we haven't decided yet but it is the responsibility of the LLC and there won't be any burden on the town I'm hearing 100 grand in taxes. Any business that starts up um, to 
to survive, it has to gain new clientele. Can we hear from, from Mark and Matt or from yourself, Tom? How are you going to sustain this business? How are you going to get new customers into this business? What's the game plan for that? Well, the initial game plan is when you open, you get what's called free press and free advertising, which is you're in the newspapers that you're opening. It's on 5 and 10, which is a busy highway. There's not going to be a, a large sign, but there's going to be a sign that people are going to understand is for marijuana, recreational and medical. Um, and it hasn't gone beyond that. It's going to start off slow and build up over, over time. A lot of what happens in these, is, in these businesses is primarily word of mouth. You know, the, the uh, Cannabis Commission has been very, very slow in issuing licenses. So, uh, um, I mean, we really haven't seen a lot of activity from them so far. It's just, just like a, it's a slow process. It's a new process, so we're just kind of going along trying to, uh, you know, make the best uh, that we can out of this particular company. Not here. No. Oh, thank you. It's not, uh, as far as the town's concerned, it's not, it's not allowed in the town bylaws right now. There are um, plans for wholesale distribution outside of the town to other um, retail establishments that don't have a grow facility. So when uh, Tom was explaining about the <coughs> percent offered on cultivation, that means for cultivation for outside um, say outside of Deerfield. <clears throat> According to the state law, you don't have to pay tax on cultivation sales. So we are offering a 1% kickback to the town on sales that are outside of the town. Thank you. I think we're, uh, we benefit from uh, Colorado. They just uh, passed the five year mark. They've been um, selling uh, marijuana for five years. Um, so they were the guinea pigs. So we can kind of see where, uh, where they had issues, where they didn't have issues. We can kind of let them, uh, let them uh, tell us what they've experienced. And, and uh, I think it's, from what I've seen, it's pretty positive for, uh, for Colorado and other states. I mean, it's just kind of like a domino effect. Uh, so, so many states are getting involved right now. I just think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to happen, whether it's through us or somebody else. And just with regard to advertising, if someone does advertise, they have to put some very specific Do warnings in the advertising okay. about consuming responsibly and about potential dangers. That wasn't good. Somebody had a question back there? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I was just wondering um, how you were going to isolate that building from the other buildings on the site? Or are you going to? Yes, it will be. It has, it has to be isolated, isolated in the sense that it has to be secure. No one can enter except through a very specific entrance where all, where you have to ch where all IDs have to be put into some sort of machine to gain entry way. To, to the other buildings? To this building. Okay, but you have, this building is much bigger than what you've shown. The vehicle plastic, so you're going right. to... Isolate the remainder of Deerfield plastics in the other two buildings that are on the site. Right. From this building with a fence? No, no, not necessarily with a fence because as you say, it's part of. Is Mark looking for something? I know. So the question, the question about the, the question about isolation of the other buildings. Yeah. So the building is connected to. If you want to um, look at the, let me get back to the slide. Yeah. Let me show. You. Go to the um, plot plane. Okay. That's yeah, the plot plane. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. There you go. So, this is the area that we're talking about here. There's, you're right, there's a total of nine buildings on the site. So, we're talking about one of the nine buildings, which is the highlighted one here, which is 40,000 square feet. The whole complex, all with all nine buildings, is about 200,000 square feet. So, there's actually two, only two interior 
access doors right now. So those would be closed off, an interior wall would be built, and that building would be completely isolated from the rest of the complex. You'd only be able to enter and exit to that building. Okay, just seems like for fire protection, monitoring, police monitoring. That Correct, that would be, okay. yeah, so right, right now. This building to an adjacent building doesn't make a lot of sense. All nine buildings are on one monitoring system now. This one would be removed from the other buildings and it would be on its own monitoring system. Okay, and if somebody wanted to put out a fire from the back of the building, there's a building in white, is that correct? Right? Yes. So there's not access around the building? There's not. There's access around the building itself. There would not be access to the back of that particular building because it wants another building, yes. I didn't know that was acceptable by the city. And whether it had to be on its own parcel of land. No, it doesn't. It does not. It does not have to be. Um, and the fire system has to be, and the security system both have to be basically a backup batteries. If electricity goes out, those systems still have to work. Any other uh, questions, concerns? I just have a property value concern based on what's happening in Cambridge. So in Cambridge, there's an $81 million lawsuit filed by local business owners who claim that a medical marijuana dispensary uh, dropped property values. What, what's your response to that? What are your thoughts on that? And is there a chance that this $100,000 uh, annual revenue might be offset by things like property loss, property value losses. So I can answer that a little bit from my side, which is I followed the Cambridge lawsuit, which a lawsuit is just um, an, the, the actual attack from the building owner was right next door to this or downstairs or upstairs, and that the property value actually for that um, parcel wasn't that high anyway. But in, if you follow what happened in Colorado, since the um, marijuana, legalization of marijuana, the property values, values in Cal Colorado have escalated and gone up. There, as far as this um, property around here, there is no property. There is now no residence within 300 feet of this property right now. What's that? There is. Which one's that? In Whitley, there's uh, three homes, a uh, dentist office, because I own them. <laughs> I'm old state road. You're wrong. My is that oh, is that within 300 feet? Because we're on the other. That's on the other side of Harris Rebar. Uh, I think uh, there, I mean, there's a, so there's 300 feet property line. Right. Right. 300 feet from the building. Right. Not, so it's a different town. It's Whitley. In terms of, of property value, I'm going to happy to try to get you that study. It showed that property values over the over several years went up eight percent. Right, I may have read that. It's from uh, Realtor.com or something like that. And, and they would naturally say that because they're usually sure have an interest in in, in selling realty in, in Colorado. But the other the other areas I I study uh, have different data to to, to respect what you say. So. Um, that's just my concern. Um, you know, I'm, I'm far away on Eastern Avenue, but um, you know, I think most of us pay four, three, four, maybe more if we have multiple properties. In um, property actually, tax. I live on the road, but oh, okay, it's, my, the road. it's my parents' house. And my father's passed away, so the three siblings own it. My 81 year old mother lives there, so I'm a little concerned. And so North Andover, North Andover did the study, and, and they looked at the projections that the business proposed, and the assessor contacted the communities in Colorado and said, hey, you know, we have this company that wants to come in, here's the projected revenues, what has been your experience? And it, it, it's been pretty unfavorable. The, the revenues weren't what they had expected, and the property values uh, surpassed the losses that we had people, or they had uh, citizens in Colorado that were asking for uh, Abatements. They were asking for reassessments of the property, um, and on top of that, um, the auto insurance rates in Colorado, I think, in a six-year span, were 54 percent. 54 percent. 
and because of the increased risk of having a business in town. Uh, Massachusetts is the only state that hasn't had that yet because we're still kind of na nascent or in, in still the embryonic phase of this. And so, um, great presentation, but when I checked the numbers, they didn't always add up. And I have the experience of this. Uh, when I'm up in Maine, I moved up there eight years ago and bought some property. Um, in that time, uh, the marijuana industry has been booming up there. I recently sold that property for double the amount I paid for it. Uh, it seems like the property is honestly skyrocketed in the neighborhood that, that uh, I've been you know, part of purchasing. And it seems like um, the, whole, the whole state is not quite a bit, actually. I think there are real numbers on this. Probably and I think every, every situation is different. So if you plank a, put a, a, a retail operation in the middle of a residential area, and in certain states you're allowed to do that, with residences next door, you're apt to get something happening with the residences next door. Right here, it's going in an industrial zone, and it doesn't have anyone on five and ten in any way on the same street who's residential. It has other industrial buildings it around it. It does have Yankee Candle, uh, which is a very popular family spot, very seasonally popular family spot. Sure. Um, so they may have something to say about you guys moving across the street. Yeah, but we did send it out to notice to them. So it's fine. Of course. Okay. And we're pretty tight with Yankee. Yankees renting this property already, so they're well aware of what's going on. And gentlemen, uh, are the patrons going to be restricted in any way from access to any other part of the property? Yes. How is that going to happen? Because it's sealed off. The, the <clears throat> retail is sealed off from the rest of the property. Somebody in a car could drive by the retail and go to another building? To the warehouse? Yes. Your concern is that they will enter the warehouse, or the warehouse is all secure? They'll potentially use the site for something other than the pumps. In other words, they could purchase marijuana or drive by, or maybe uh, the issue would be security of the other buildings and security of the people that drive in. But these properties are all owned by me, so I think the security of the other buildings should be my concern. Okay. Would you agree? I, I, I am very no, concerned about You have to understand, sir, I'm very secure. Yep. I'm very concerned about the security my, of all my, my property. Yep. But if you had a, a property here that was something of your concern, or if you'd like to see how this is laid out, that people can't, there's an entranceway into the, to the gate that's a gated property. Are you familiar with that, right? And so they will we'll go in and then there's parking areas within the property. Right. Depending on the amount of customers that we have coming in to the facility, the property, the uh, parking lot is all the way all to the, the way back. Way. And so how much we're going to use depends on how much traffic we have. If I had to use the whole entire property to fill up because we have 150 customers yeah. coming at a time, I that is the way the business would operate. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that will be part of your presentation at the planning board? You will be explaining where the parking is going to be for this area for sure. But that is, that's definitely a, a concern. It's a concern of, of Mark. I mean, no one, it's, we're going to make sure that nobody buys marijuana and then goes deeper into the property and smokes it. That's not going to happen. You can't use the product on the property. Uh, so. I'm just asking for how you would be fixed. Right. And, and uh, uh, per the commission, uh, loitering is not allowed either. So people will be coming and going, but they're not going to be just hanging around. There are cameras which will monitor that too. 20, you know, whenever the property is open. Hmm. Anybody else have a, a question? All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All cash sales. Uh, all cash sales at this moment in time. You got a good credit card company that will take credit cards. We'd be open to that. 
but that's not what's happening right now. That's probably a safety plan. That'll be part of the safety plan. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of cash which is going to go off premises. Mm -hmm. On premises too. On premises too. Yeah. No question about that. I mean, people in the business are hopeful that the federal government will loosen up and allow banks to uh, deal with marijuana, cash, and uh, ultimately that would open it up to credit cards. But nobody's taken that leap yet. But someday, maybe it'll be square, you know, on the property. So, how is this business going to differentiate itself from East Hampton, Amherst, Northampton, Holyoke, all? I'm sorry, Greenfield. Um, how is it going? How can it be sure that the numbers going to be there when you have all these competing? Okay. You know about business, you're never sure of the revenue. Right. Is that true? So you're never sure of the revenue. Our goal and plan, which is in the earlier slide, which is to produce the highest quality products, the most affordable prices, the, having the um, University of Massachusetts involved in the development of future strains with a scientific program on board, and um, the location of this is a prime location. We are, as you said, across the street from Yankee Candle, um, a minute from Route 91. There's a lot of traffic going up 91. Uh, and 91 north and south, you actually have to go by the property. If you're getting off 91 and you want to get back on 91, you got to go by this property to get back on. So uh, anybody's been down to get coffee at the... Um, Dunkin' Donuts knows about the problem with traffic down in there, people going by, and now we've got the new Cumberland Farms, which is going to, you know, expand a little bit on that, but I think there's going to be quite a bit of traffic that's going to go by. Uh, we won't be using, uh, you know, these obnoxious neon signs, we're not being focused on the product in the sign, but the, the advertisement, the signage will be there for the company, and we have, this is a, a different type of facility than if you're looking at the other ones, if you're familiar with the East Hampton, uh, the North Hampton, the North Hampton facility is the oldest one and very, very busy if you've ever been down there to see the amount of business that's going on there in Greenfield. But if you look at this facility, this is, um, an, this is the old plastics building. There's enough power here to fill this whole place up with growing and cultivation. Of course, we wouldn't be able to sell all of that product on site. So we hope that uh, we'll be able to dis distribute product to other retail facilities in Boston. So to guarantee you that you're going to get, as we said in the beginning, the host agreement fee, $25,000 for the school before we sell anything. That's guaranteed. After that, it's a percentage of sales. And I can't guarantee the sales, but I expect that the sales will exceed what this prediction is. If you talk to other people in the industry, they expect, given this location and where we are, that the sales would be um, higher than we're predicting. It takes time. It does. We understand that. It takes time to get the license. It takes time for people to understand uh, if the product is better, the quality is better, the location where you are. We are in Deerfield. It's not... You know, it's, there's not a big population base here, so getting people traveling by is great, but that's going to take longer time to get people to commute here um, as opposed to being in Greenfield. Mm, I don't know. Again, the focus is on quality, quality in the product and quality in the facility. And so we hope that this uh, facility would do nothing but benefit the town. One huge advantage is for Mark, in contrast to people, other people who are opening up retail facilities, is that Mark owns this building. Usually people are paying exorbitant rents, and that's putting a tremendous amount of pressure on them, causing them to have to try to raise prices to make their rent, and Mark's just not in that situation. He already owns the building. So he can afford to have some time to develop a business without the pressure otherwise he'd have. 
We, we are currently working in uh, the furniture industry. I don't know if you know about the other business that I own. The furniture business? Yeah, over on 116, going towards Sunderland. You familiar with that? It used to be the distant tool building. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my property also. We, this, that business used to be located here. Um, we moved over there about two years ago and have, um, if you've noticed any of the work that we've done over there, totally renovated that property um, and have built the business up. With, um, um, we're close to 40 employees over there right now. That industry, in the furniture industry, in the wholesale furniture industry, we sell to Walmart, we sell to Amazon, we sell to Wayfair, we sell to Target. It is a super highly competitive business. If I can't survive in this business, um, I don't know what Different business is. art, and, you know, for you to understand, uh, different, different clientele, different opportunities. So, um, I'm not sure if that's an apples to apples comparison, but I understand what you're trying to communicate. Yeah, I wasn't making apples to apples. I'm saying okay. is that this business is much less competitive. If it wasn't much less competitive, then there wouldn't be a mad rush to get into it as investors and other people. It is a lucrative business at the moment. That is a known fact. Whether or not I will succeed at it with this team, I'm doing the best I can. I think we have a good team here. I think that we will be able to succeed. As far as the rate of growth, I do not. We'll see. Yes, sir. Uh, last question. Uh, are you have to deal with mass DOD relative to turning lanes or access to the site? Uh, no, the DOT yeah. should be all set. We have a good curb cut right down there now. If we were to add another curb cut, we'll have to go through but DOT. So change of use, going from retail to manufacturing, that definitely has That's a zoning issue. Well, definitely has a trip changes too. Excuse me? Number of trips per day would change. Do you know about this? Well, the number of, there'll be some increase in the number of trips per day, but we, but, but we do not think that it will be a significant enough increase to impact traffic in any way. So you haven't talked to the We have, no, no, it would actually, it's, I don't think it's a mass DOT issue. Relative I think to the traffic? Relative to the traffic, because the curb cuts are already there. All right. Anybody else have any, uh, any questions? Okay, well, thank, thank on you behalf all. of the, uh, uh, the group and our team, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I think we'll leave some of these, well, this slide uh, in particular up. If anybody wants to come up here and look at it a little more, I know it's kind of hard to see from where you're sitting, but if you want to take a peek at it a little closer, come on up and, and uh, see this slide or any other slide you'd like to see that has a diagram that you may want to get a better look at. So thanks again.